Hello, my people. I'm excited to see you yet again. Today's... Ah. Ah. Oh. Oh. Very sorry. Very sorry. Purell. Snowman. I had to put him to good use. After all, a bandit of whimsy dropped him off. Just saying. Ah, don't you hate when it takes too long to dry? <sighs> I am not a fan of the outdoors. I'm more of kind of like a, a passive observer. This last year, I did get into hiking. I will say there's something absolutely incredible about ascending a mountain and being on the very tip top of that mountain and looking down around at everything and just being like, <sighs> I climbed this mountain, and even though it's only 2,000 feet, I feel like a mountaineer who just ascended Everest. Even though I know Everest is like 20 million feet up there, and this was only 2,000 feet, but it felt the same. If you've never climbed Everest, it felt the same. However, prior to this last year, my joy of outside was pretty much none. I saw zero reasons to enjoy it for any length of time. There's so many awful, bad, terrible things that happen to you. It's like Santa Claus's naughty list of bad things. It's just the list of awfulness that just... Uh, yeah. Oh, you don't believe me? Okay, let me give you just a few. You could be bitten by a wolf. You could break your arm. Mauled by a bear. Break your leg. Attacked by one billion insects because that's where they live. You could break your literal face. The sun could cook you alive. One of my personal favorites, you could be eaten by a mountain lion. You are on his turf. He's 27 miles away in a tree looking down going, I'm in the mood for some takeout. <laughs> As in, he will take you out. There was one more very important reason not to go outside, but I'll save that one for later. Let me qualify this just a little bit. I like going out duck hunting. Four hours, there and back. Okay, I'm home. Okay, great. Oh, awesome. I like climbing a mountain so long as I can be there and back in like four hours. That's kind of my limit. My threshold is the four hour mark. After that, it's kind of like, why are we out here? This is dumb. Camping outside, you just get dirty and you, you sleep on the ground. Who, why do, why sleep on the ground? People tell me all the time, you should totally go outside. It's so great out there. Mother nature is so wonderful. It's awesome outside. Really, is that the case? Because for the last 10,000 years, mankind has been perfecting the inside. Do you know what you will see if you go to an ancient cave where ancient people anciently lived? Pictures! Inside! We were sprucing up caves way back in the day because we wanted something nice to look at when we were inside. Ever since then, we have been perfecting the inside to keep us away from the elements, to keep us warm, to keep us cool. We now have air conditioning. All hail air conditioning. Hail. I would be doing a great disservice to the men and women who valiantly perfected and modified and created so many awesome things for inside. I am not a fan of being outside and that is where our story takes place. When I was younger, I would go to the Navajo Indian Reservation on a mission trip every summer with my youth group. We would go down there and build buildings or paint buildings, set up a meeting, help them with the different things that they had going on. It was always a lot of fun. We got to see the Grand Canyon. I got to go to Moab. I got to go up into the place where Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade films the very first part and I climbed all the way up there and I got up there and guess what? There's no hole in the rocks. It's completely movie magic. And part of me died inside. Indy, the fire's going out. I know that's a different movie. Don't, don't quote Indiana Jones to me. Every time we would go, we would drive down there, which was a really long drive because this was before Nintendo Switches or DSs or iPods or iPhones. We had Discmans, yo. And that was cutting edge techno, like super sharp cutting edge techno. If you would have ran the Discman against your beard, it would have sliced it off. That's how sharp the cutting edge was. Road trips were forever. We would always stop in Cortez because my youth pastor grandparents lived there on an awesome farm that was super big. One thing about outdoors is that objects are not as close as they appear. Objects outside are opposite of mirrors. They are forever away. If you are not standing on the part where the mountain goes from flat to like up part, it is forever away. It will take you forever to get there. And in the backyard of Grandma Cortez was a mountain and it was the weirdest part of the landscape because it was like flat, flat, flat mountain. My friends Josh, Ben, and Brian did not understand this principle in life. So they see this mountain and being fools, they decided they wanted to walk to it. Hey guys, let's go climb to that mountain. Sounds like a perfectly wonderful idea with zero flaws in the plan. I was not going to go up until the point that the girl that I fancied said she was going to go and then obviously I was going to go. She was accompanied by one other girl so five of us in total left. We told the youth pastors we were going for a walk and we went about our way. We began an epic journey to that mountain like it was Mount Doom, like we were the fellowship of the ring. Only there was five of us and we didn't have a ring or, or, or a dwarf. 
but it would have been cool if we did. I, if Gimli was there, that would have made it, I would have been happy. I would have been happy about that trip. We're walking for about 30 minutes, and the girl that is not the object of my fancy decides that she wants to go back. Now, I revere her to this day as the wisest one of us all. So much wisdom that you would climb to the top of a mountain to ask her wisdom advice, because that's how much wisdom she had by saying, <laughs> let's throw this towel in. My friends Ben and Brian said they were doing the gentlemanly noble thing, which they did do, but I think they also saw the writing on the mountain and decided that they didn't want to continue this journey either because it, we had not progressed at all towards that mountain. Even though we'd been walking for 30 minutes, it was still just as far as the crow flies, I think. It was just as far. So they turn and escort her back because that's the gentlemanly and right thing to do. And I continue on with Josh and the girl of my fancy. We're walking and we're walking and we're there's more walking. Did I mention that we did the walking? It was lots of walking. After about an hour and a half, I am done with this stupid trip and we are still no closer to that stupid mountain. Josh looks at me and goes, uh-oh, I have to go to the bathroom. Well, we're out in the middle of farmland. Go. Mm, you don't understand. I have to go number two. Well, that certainly creates another sort of a dilemma now, doesn't it, my friend? He decides he's just going to man up and hold it. We're just going to keep on going. I remember saying to him, bro, it's an hour and a half back. I think maybe he was thinking we would stumble upon a gas station or something on our way there. I don't know. We continue on our stupid epic walk for another 10 minutes before he says, okay, I got, I got to go. 20 feet ahead of us, there's a bridge. And under that bridge is a ravine. And when I say ravine, I'm, it's like a little, like a gully, like a, like a little fern gully. It is 15 to 18 feet down and maybe 100 yards across. And there is no water in it, but it's super green. So I assume during the wet season, the water just flows through there like a river. Assuming there's a wet season in that part of the country, which I'm not even sure that there is. He says, you two stay here. I'm going to go down there and make my delivery in the ravine. I am all too happy for this because he disappears. And now I am with the girl of my fancy. So naturally, I chat her up. Hello, how are you? Terrible weather we're having, isn't it? What an awful hike we're on. Even with all of the dirt and the sweat and the awfulness of this hike, you still look pretty. Sometime we should go out. And we did. The time continues to extend and we reach the point where pooping should have ceased and it just keeps on going and keeps on going. And just as I'm about to go explore the ravine to find out whether or not my friend had been taken out, he emerges. But he emerges with a look of pain and confusion and distress upon his face. Okay, that really sucked. I should certainly hope so, sir. You made poop in a ravine. No, you, you don't understand. He begins into the story and he says how he got down there and he was looking to make sure that there wasn't anything that was going to eat him. And he was looking around and he found some leaves because we didn't have any toilet paper with us and he sits down to do his business and right as he goes to wipe, he realizes that he did not thoroughly check said leaves for spines. As he's telling this story and I'm beginning to laugh and the girl's beginning to laugh and he still has distress on his face because he has spines in, in, that, in that place. I'm laughing and then I take a deep breath and I, oh, oh, bro, what is, oh, oh, what is that? Dude, you smell like poop. As I look down him, not only was he wearing sandals, but he stepped right in his little ravine delivery and it got all over his sandal and all over his foot and it was now emanating in our area. The smell of fecal matter. <laughs> The girl is now thoroughly grossed out and she walks across the bridge to the other side. I'm looking at him like, bro, what are you doing? And he goes, uh, when, I, when I wiped, <laughs> when I wiped, the, the spine stuck me and I, it startled me and I stumbled backwards. I am now laughing and fighting back vomit as he is cleaning off the poop on the side of the bridge and he's trying to wipe his foot off and it's just, it's so gross. And right as this is happening, our van pulls up with everybody in it and they get out and they go, what are you doing? <laughs> And he has to explain the whole thing to everybody. I said there was another good reason for not going outside and that is that plants will defend themselves because no one wants to be pooped on. Thank you guys for tuning in on another Friday for another story. We'll have one next week. If you haven't clicked the subscribe button, please click the subscribe button. I want everybody who watches this video, please do me a favor. This week, share one of my videos. There's a whole bunch, there's a whole playlist you can watch called Season 1 because we are in Season 1, baby. I really want to press and try and get us to 2,000. We're at 1,385 or something like that right now. We just got to get over this hump. There's a hump and we got to climb it like a mountain, only we're at this part right here so it's not that far not that far we just gotta go over just over the top click that like button and leave a comment about your not favorite hike that you've been on as well as your favorite color have a fantastic week my people and as always keep telling stories <laughs> <laughs>